Everyone. Okay, well, good morning. I'd like to call the meeting to order for the Economic Development Committee meeting on January 19th of 2021. It's now 8.32. Um, so we do have a quorum present on the call, but they're not physically present. So according to Section 70 of the Open Meetings Act, members are permitted to attend remotely Either one member of the committee, the chief administrative officer, or our chief legal counsel are physically present in our regular meeting room. In-person attendance and public comments are allowed, subject to attendance limitations required to ensure health and safety of all those who attend. So, Ms. Everett, will you please call the roll? Chavez? Here. Bellman? Here. Renahan? Echo? Here. Luciani. Here. Rutledge. Here. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, our next item of business is approval of the minutes um, from the last meeting on November 17th. Motion to approve, Luciani. Second, Great. Rutledge. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments, or changes? Okay, perfect. Can we please call the roll? Sure, Chavez. Here, or uh, aye. <laughs> Selman. Aye. Renahan. Echo. Where'd you go? Oh. We lost that one. Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Now we're moving on to Chairman's remarks. So um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. I'd also like to welcome my Vice Chair, Ashley Selman. Um, in addition, we have uh, four County Board members that will be representing their districts on this committee. Um, member DeCiani, Member Renahan, Member Eckhoff, and Member Rutledge. So welcome to you all. I know several of you have served on this committee in the past. Um, so welcome back and I look forward to working with all of you. Um, I'd also like to introduce our staff liaisons. We have Lisa Shabak on the call and you'll be hearing from her shortly. And also Amy Everett is our secretary. For those of you that don't know me, um, I have a corporate background as an executive with Lucent Technologies and Allergan Pharmaceuticals. At Lucent, I worked in the role of the wireless infrastructure and uh, rolling out E911. And then I moved into telecommunications for the Olympics, um, rolling out everything we needed for Salt Lake City. So I handled a big budget there of about $350 million and every part of that RFP hit my desk. So after that project, I moved on to Allergan Pharmaceuticals. I've worked in healthcare before. I managed a three state territory there. Um, and I was worked closely with surgeons and our surgery centers, but I also worked with our veterans in making sure that our medications were on their formulary so that they had access to the best medications and not just generic formulary medications. And then I also worked um, with our indigent patient program, making sure that any patients that couldn't afford medications had access to them. So I mentioned a little bit about my background because I think Ashley will attest that as the chairman and she were working on committees, the committee that I most hoped to serve on was this committee. So it's an honor to be the chair of this committee. My heart is in business and our local economy, and I'm just really interested to um, work with you all and to get going. So today I'd like to recognize that we have three speakers. Um, we have Lisa Shavak at WorkNet, who's going to be giving a presentation as well as Greg Bedelov at Choose DuPage. And of course, his team has been really instrumental in helping us get the PPP loans out, approving all of those um, applications. So I really wanna thank him and his team as well. Um, Beth Marchetti is also on the call today. So thank you, Beth. She'll be giving a presentation as well. And um, obviously we're in unprecedented times and a lot of our local businesses are going to need help this year. So as we look forward, I'm just looking forward to working with all of you. Please know that you can reach out to me anytime if you have concerns. My whole um, leadership style is about collaboration. So please reach out to me anytime and um, we'll move on. So next we have, um, is there any public comment? There is not. Okay. Great, let me just close that out. <clears throat> okay, so we'll move on to budget transfers. Um, can I get a motion to approve a budget transfer 
um, to reclassify account 57030, transfer out of the health department for the amount budgeted. For the contract tracers and resource data entry specialists that will be hired through the health department. So moved, Salman. Second. All right. All right, are there any questions or comments? All right, can we please call the roll? Abed. Aye. Salman. Aye. Renahan. Echo. Aye. Adriani. Aye. And Rutledge. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. And um, next we have budget transfers, request to transfer funds to reclassify various amounts to pay for salaries and fringes for year three in the Illinois Tollway Grant. Uh, year three is budgeted to reimburse for payroll hours. Can I get a motion in a second? So moved, Salman. Second, Rutledge. All right, are there any questions or comments? All right, can we please call the roll? Abed. Aye. Salman. Aye. Renahan. Echo. Aye. Tiziani? Aye. Rutledge? Aye. Okay, the motion carries. So our first presenter today is Lisa Shavak with WorkNet, and um, I know she know needs no introduction to many of you, and I know she's got a presentation that's so important. So Lisa, will you please take over? Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Oh, you're sharing the screen for me. Perfect. Um, I am going to make sure that everybody has a copy of this full presentation after uh, the meeting today. I'm going to kind of sail through it in the interest of time here. Um, so again, I'm Lisa Shavak. Many of you know me. I'm the director of um, WorkNet DuPage, which is the DuPage County Workforce Development Division. Uh, next slide, please. So um, we are 100% federally funded through the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. We're located in Lyle, uh, 2525 Cabot Drive. Our mission is, is to assist DuPage County businesses and job seekers um, through employment and training, a variety of employment and training services. Currently, we are providing um, services virtually or by appointment. We are not open to the general public at this time due to um, obviously COVID and the uh, uh, attendance restraints that are on the office building that we're in. Um, next slide, please. So I'm not going to um, dive too deep into the actual WIOA. You'll be happy to know. I'm not going to read the entire law to you. Um, but the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act was signed into law in 2014. It's interesting to note that there was broad bipartisan support. There were only nine members of the entire Congress that uh, voted against the act. So that's pretty significant um, in this day and age, especially. Previous versions of this law date back to 1962. So it is kind of a fundamental um, bedrock type of piece of legislation. The uh, purpose of it is to increase economic self-sufficiency of workers, prosperity of employers. Um, and we do that through increased access to education, training, and employment. Um, next slide, please. This is a snapshot of the multi-level level federal workforce system. We get all of our funding through the Department of Labor. It's passed through the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. And then DuPage County um, is the fiscal agent for local workforce area six in the state um, of Illinois. We're part of Economic Development Region four, which essentially is the entire Metro Chicago region. Next slide. So our center is the only of its kind in DuPage County. Um, every local workforce area is required to have a comprehensive one-stop. And what that means essentially is that all of the um, federal funding streams that were represented on that previous slide through both Department of Education and Department of Labor need to be present in one center in each local workforce area throughout the country. And so in DuPage County, that's, that's our center. Um, we are required, it's important to note right now that um, we are required to have a one-stop operator per the law. And that one-stop operator is responsible for coordinating service amongst those partners, as well as um, the referral process between partners to ensure that customers have seamless service. Currently, our one-stop operator is the Western DuPage Chamber of Commerce. The contract for that um, position is going to be up soon, so we will be releasing an RFP in the coming weeks. 
Um, next slide. Thank you. Um, again, I'm going to kind of gloss over this a bit, but um, this is a breakdown. This and the next slide represent a breakdown of those federal funding streams. We The funding that we hold is the Title I funding, which is for adults, dislocated workers, youth, and business in DuPage County. Um, and then you have Title II, III, IV. You can see our required partners there, College of DuPage, IDS, DRS. And then if you go to the next slide, Uh, next slide, please. Oops. Well, the previous slide also shows additional funding streams. And again, like I said, I'll make sure that everybody has a copy of this um, following the conclusion of the meeting. So this slide um, shows what our funding is for this program year. Our program years always run July 1 through June 30. So the current year that we're in is, pe oops. We could go back to the budget. I know these are these are touchy sometimes. Um, our current our current budget year is program year twenty, which started on July first. We there we go. Um, every program year, we have three primary grants, which are the 1A grant, the 1D grant, and the 1Y grant. The 1A grant, we primarily serve um, adults that meet certain low income guidelines. For program year 20, you can see we have um, approximately $1.3 million in that grant. Dislocated workers are individuals that are collecting unemployment or were eligible for unemployment. Um, we have one point, almost $2 million in that grant for this program year. Youth ages 16 to 24, you can see we have one, almost 1 1.5 million. Um, we have admin dollars every program year. Our total allocation for this program year is um, $4.76 million. Um, next slide, please. We also this year, um, I applied for additional grants to respond to the COVID crisis. Um, we received a 1E grant for 515000 and some change, which we used um, to help essential businesses in the county to prevent layoffs. Um, I also applied for a disaster recovery and an economic recovery grant, and you can see the dollar amounts there, 716000 and 528000 We're currently in the process of administering those dollars. The disaster recovery grant is the grant through which we are funding contact tracers um, for employment at the health department currently. Um, next slide. This is a encapsulation of um, our primary services for job seekers. We do employment goal and training plan development as well as um, career counseling. The heart and soul of what we do are the individual training accounts, also known as vouchers. Eligible individuals can receive up to $10,000 to attend occupational training programs that increase their marketability in high demand uh, career paths. And then we also do a wide range of job search skills training and workshops, job coaching, um, job search assistance, and so forth. Next slide. Our business services are outlined here. Um, notably, I'll draw your attention to the incumbent worker training grants through which we reimburse the cost of businesses um, training their existing workforce. We can approve up to $25,000 per business for that. Those items do come to this committee as an information, um, information only item. So you will see those from time to time on the agenda. Uh, next slide. So right now <clears throat> we um, are in the process of releasing our year in review. And if you go to the next slide, I'm gonna hit a few of the highlights of this for you. So this past program year, um, we funded to the tune of $2.2 million, 521 job seekers uh, for occupational training. Those are in the four key industries of DuPage County, those being information technology, healthcare, TDL, transportation, distribution, and logistics, and uh, manufacturing. If you go to the next slide, those that exited our program who completed services earned um, upwards of $17.7 .7 million. So you could see the, um, the, it's kind of an impact statement that through that amount of funding, you get that much return on investment. Next uh, slide, please. 
We also provided eight, over $800,000 in grants to DuPage businesses. I mentioned those 1E COVID-related grants, of which we had 22. We also had 23 grants that um, provided funded training for apprenticeships and other customized training solutions for local businesses. Next slide. Um, obviously, we played a key role in COVID-19. And if you go to the next slide... One of the things that we did, we were first in the state um, and we've really kind of led the way in a lot of innovative virtual service delivery. One of our big initiatives was the From Layoff to Launch. Um, anybody who's dislocated can tune into that session once a week live and get comprehensive information in partnership with IDES and Department of Labor about everything from unemployment, um, the services that we of course have available as well as healthcare options. And you're seeing a resident there, Susanna, who used those services in a statement that she made. Um, and if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, we, two Brothers locally was one of the businesses that we assisted. They transformed their operation to produce hand sanitizer, and we offset some of the cost um, associated with them doing that. Those 1E grants to date have saved 686 jobs um, and $36.2 million in annual wages. Next slide. These are some key partnerships that we have developed over the program year with health department, community services. We partnered with them to provide rent assistance, um, and we have an ongoing relationship with World Relief to provide training to um, refugees and asylum seekers. And next slide. So what we would like to ask the committee to do um, is to help us get the word out. One of the struggles that we have is that a lot of residents and businesses don't realize that all of these great services are available. So we've made it quite easy for you to help um, share the full year in review report. Um, I would also strongly recommend you taking a look at it. There's some really great stories in there of both job seekers and businesses that have benefited from the programming that we deliver at WorkNet DuPage. Um, again, I'll be sharing this presentation. So if you would like to share on your social media feeds or otherwise, it's easy access here. Um, and I think that's the end. Final slide is just our contact information uh, for both myself and Amy Everett. Great. Thank you so much, Ms. Shabak. We're so grateful to all the hard work you all are doing. And um, one of the things I asked of all of our presenters today was that they share an action item that we can all take away um, to help move their needle forward as they do their hard work. What can we do to assist them? So I hope everyone will take um, Lisa up on that offer to share those valuable resources with everyone that you know on your platforms, um, with businesses that you know personally, reach out to them because we need to have them taking advantage of all these wonderful resources. So thank you so much. Thank so you. next we'll move on to Choose to Page and Greg Bedelov's presentation. So take it away. Oh, but you're on mute, Greg. I'm on mute. I wanted to be respectful while the other presentation was going on. Sorry about that. Thank you, Chair Chavez and the members of the Economic Development Committee. A brief overview of Choose to Page, who we are, what we do, what we've been up to lately, and how you can help us be successful in our efforts to promote DuPage County as a premier global business location. Next slide, please. So we are the collective voice of the county's business community. We are here, as I mentioned, to promote DuPage County as a premier global business location and to help businesses grow, to retain businesses and attract businesses to DuPage County. Working with our partners at WorkNet, the CVB, the state of Illinois, DCEO, local municipal economic development directors in the state of Illinois. Our goal is always to maintain the best and lowest unemployment level in DuPage, in the region for DuPage County and to help promote DuPage County as a premier global business location. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, our primary goal, we wanna help grow, retain and attract businesses. That's what we do day in and day out. Our team here, focuses on economic development opportunities for the county, removing barriers and helping those businesses get across the goal line to locate their business or grow their business in DuPage County. As you know, we also support countywide economic development initiatives such as the relief program and the marketing program that were most recently on your radar associated with COVID-19. And we work to educate and help identify any policy issues or any encumbrances to help grow the regional economy. Next slide, please. Our revenue sources, we are a public-private partnership. Uh, we were founded almost 15 years ago and 
Ever since then, our contributions from the private sector have equaled at least 50% of our annual funding. As you see currently, we're just over 50% in private sector contributions. That is in the form of good old fashioned hard currency, as well as in-kind or donated services required to run Choose DuPage. Next slide, please. You, um, direct, uh, Chair Chavez wanted a little bit of our current projects and what's going on. Um, from a marketing perspective, we have a big portion of our budget that is designed for marketing. As you know, we were allocated a million dollars in conjunction with our partners at the DuPage County Convention and Visitors Bureau to work with site selectors and business decision makers in helping promote DuPage. We kicked off a marketing plan. I believe I distributed that marketing plan or at least an overview to all the members of the county board. If anybody would like to see it, please let me know. Uh, one thing I always hear regarding our marketing is how come I don't see more of it in DuPage County. It is designed primarily to focus on areas outside of the county to attract businesses inside of DuPage County or to DuPage County. Our audiences are site selectors, commercial real estate brokers, consultants, those who help make the decisions for businesses to locate in DuPage, as well as key industry sectors. Lisa pointed out some of the growth sectors and some of the mature sectors in DuPage County. Uh, I'd be, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention Western Access and the opportunity for transportation distribution and logistics that Lisa touched on and the burgeoning market that that presents from an opportunity perspective for DuPage County. Next slide, please. So our marketing plan, as I mentioned, it's a continuation of that attraction plan that we did uh, along with COVID. It is content-based. We do social media, we do digital ads. Our entire plan will go in front of our marketing committee for 2021 on January 27th. We have a marketing committee on Tuesday page. They will hopefully see the plan and approve it. We will take it to our full board and always we share it with any county board member who's interested in seeing it. Next slide, please. Talking quickly about the Reinvest DuPage plan, this was the plan where you all allocated $21 million basically in four different tranches to help the business community. Choose DuPage was proud, and I want to emphasize proud to administer that program for you, and we're very proud of how quickly we got that money through the volunteers on the grant committee, which were Choose DuPage board members with expertise in the banking and financial world. There you see the numbers in phase one, phase two. Those were businesses that were uh, there was no restriction. It could be any business. There was some size restrictions, number of employees. Phase three and phase four was basically the restaurant grant program designed to help our small businesses in the dining community. And you can see there the total of number of businesses. I believe if you total all those up, it's just short of 1,200 businesses and just short of $21 million. It was done in conjunction with the county senior staff in finance. Uh, and the audit team, and it's just been a phenomenal program for the business community in DuPage. Next slide, please. So there's the numbers. I was wrong. 1,621 businesses and $20.49 million. Where we're at right now, the program is closed. If any of the businesses in your district are asking you, uh, that program is closed. We are working with the businesses to ensure that the funds that they were allocated are being used in accordance with the guidelines. And I will tell you, it's been really heartwarming. Over 500 businesses who received an email right before the holiday saying, we were happy to award you this money through the county, but now you have to prove to us that you've used it in conjunction with the guidelines. More than a third of those businesses have already responded and provided proof that they've been using the money in conjunction with the guidelines. So we'll continue to work with those businesses until we get full compliance that all 1,621 of them, or as close as we possibly can, have used the money in conjunction with the guidelines. Next slide, please. So we are currently developing what's new for 2021. We are currently developing a strategic plan and a roadmap for economic development success. And it's really a new plan um, built off of our old plan. And it's designed to look at our economy in DuPage in a new light, in a post-COVID light, what that's going to mean for office space, what that's going to mean for industrial space, and what ideas and initiatives we can implement to achieve measurable performance goals that we might be able to bring to you to help us in terms of being flexible 
and nimble. Those are two words that you'll continue to hear from me. Uh, it's a new world from an economic development perspective, whether it's offices needing more open space for their businesses, whether it's office buildings being repurposed into transportation, distribution, and logistics. This is the coming future of the economy in DuPage, e-commerce replacing brick and mortar retail. And our goal is to develop a plan that we can use in conjunction with our strategic stakeholders to implement growth in DuPage. That plan should be ready by the end of March, 2021. And hopefully we will be presenting it to our board and the Economic Development Committee of the County Board. Next slide, please. Business attraction and retention. Uh, we are the back office for the communities within DuPage County. We work on local RFIs, that RFI requests for information from businesses that are looking to relocate. We work with local municipalities to identify resources. As you can imagine, we have a rather robust database. We have many, many, many projects going on currently in DuPage. We just closed a big deal in DuPage County with a company called Greenleaf Foods the largest purveyor of plant-based meat products in North America, who chose to open their test kitchens right here in Lyle, Illinois, across the street from our office, where we, uh, where we are with Lisa and her team. A great win for DuPage County, about 30 food scientist jobs uh, that are gonna be growing here in DuPage, but that's kind of the day in, day out blocking and tackling stuff that we do. If anybody wants to know anything more about any specific deals, quote unquote, that we're working on, please let us know. Next slide, please. We also are your source for economic indicators. If you want to know how DuPage County is doing with respect to other counties, with respect to DuPage County last year, what our projections are for the coming years, we publish quarterly economic indicators on everything from office vacancy, industrial and warehouse vacancy, unemployment, retail sales tax. We're happy to share that. We publish that on social media. If you want to know any economic indicators, please let us know. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, we think it's really important to interface with our 30 or 31 or 32, depending on how many you count as wholly located or partially located within DuPage County on quarterly community meetings where we get together with all the economic development leaders from DuPage County and talk about things that are important to them. Our next meeting is Thursday, January 28th. It will be virtual. It is about current trends in municipal finance and economic development. Things are changing on how projects get financed within local municipalities. We have resources and folks that are ready to help. We bring in subject matter experts to talk about these matters to our local economic development leaders. Next slide, please. We also are proud of the work that we do with Chairman Cronin. We do Chairman's Breakfast where we host, um, now they're virtual. Our next meeting is mental health in the workplace. Many businesses have come to us and said, do we have resources that are available? So we work with partners on our board and others throughout DuPage County, Metropolitan Family Services is working with us on this particular event. Businesses are asking for help on how they navigate mental health issues. We're working with all of our partners on that. Uh, we've done quarterly breakfast with Chairman Cronin for about two years now on topics from how to hire Gen X and how to hire millennials and how to work with folks and mental health. And we're proud of the work we do there. Next slide, please. We're wrapping up here. How can you help? Um, we really, Lisa Maselli, who is steering this presentation for me, is gonna be reaching out to you all on the strategic planning process. And we need your input and your guidance on things that you think are important as elected officials. We're not a legislative body. So we wanna know what you'd like to see from us in terms of strategic planning. We have, as Lisa mentioned, we want you to promote us through your social media resources and any ideas you are, in touch with the businesses in your districts on a daily basis. Anything you hear, anything we can help from businesses, small to large, please let us know. And I believe that wraps it up. We're happy to answer any questions you may have about our organization. I had one question. It's okay with the chair. Of course. Um, well, first of all, Greg, uh, Choose DuPage did a fantastic job uh, with all of the applications for COVID funding and for all the businesses. And I want to thank you and your staff for doing that along with uh, the other individuals uh, that assisted you. 
Um, I was reading last night about how different uh, sections of the state have been moved into different tiers uh, for the type of businesses that they could run. And I was a little confused because I, I read like the Herald and the Trib and the Sun Times. And it seemed, it seemed to be saying that the casinos have been open the entire time that our restaurants have been shut or that they're being expanded, even though our restaurants are still stay, staying shut. And I didn't know if you had any information about that. Last I heard, Member Eckhoff, um, DuPage County, located in Region 8, had been moved to Tier 2 mitigations. And that allows for restaurants to open at 25% capacity for indoor dining, outdoor dining, and carryout are open. Uh, as you know, we don't have any, at least to my knowledge, we don't have any casinos uh, or legislatively approved casinos in DuPage. But yes, casinos have been open throughout the state of Illinois and continue to be open um, during this period. And I don't, I honestly, Member Eckhoff, again, because we don't have any casinos in DuPage, I don't know about the restaurants in terms of the capacity within a casino uh, in terms of, of where they fall, in terms of how oh, open I mean. they can be. But I will tell you, Member Eckhoff, I think you may be aware, uh, when this whole pandemic hit, I was really proud of the fact that Choose DuPage, because we weren't getting a lot of guidance from the state on how to reopen safely and how to make sure that our economy had a fighting chance for success. Uh, Lisa Maselli and myself and the team at Choose DuPage, we, we wrote a reopen DuPage plan in conjunction with the DuPage County Health Department and presented it to the governor and his staff. Uh, and we, I was proud of the fact that within a week, the state announced their reopening plan. Now, I don't mean that to sound self-serving, like they did the plan after we did the plan, but um, we have been working so hard with our local restaurants and the local municipalities to encourage them to do whatever they can do to be flexible and nimble, listening to the restaurant community about the tents and about, you know, do sliding doors qualify as access to open air? Um, but yeah, we are, right now we are tier two mitigation and casinos are fully open. Yeah, I, I read your plan before you submitted it to the governor and I know you worked really hard on that and it was a Great job, and I'm sure it helped the governor a lot. I, I just didn't know. I, I don't understand how you can open a casino where people are real close together and then open restaurants. And it just seems to me that at some point, uh, somebody's got to recognize that there's a double standard here for things that the state needs revenue from and uh, things that restaurant owners and local governments need uh, revenue from it just yeah. uh, i don't know if you talked to the governor and oh well, to be yeah member echo off to be clear while choose do pages we're 501c6 so we're not a c3 so we're not really a legislative advocacy body but we did submit our plan along with our letters not only for restaurants but for bowling alleys and movie theaters on our thoughts and how they could open safely within dupage county i know the cvb i see beth on the call was very uh, proactive in that as well. So uh, while we no. rarely, repeat rarely, kind of weigh in on those state legislative issues with respect to restaurants, bars, bowling alleys, movie theaters, hotels, we did present a very golf courses. We did present what we thought was a very strong plan to the governor and we will continue to do so to support the business community. It, it just a few, if anybody on this uh, meeting runs across what the scientific information is that the governor is following to leave the casinos open and restaurants closed. I'd be interested to see it. Thank you. Thank you, Member Eckhoff. Um, I see Member Selman, you have a question? Thank you. I just wanted to um, thank Choose Your Page and Mr. Bedeloff for the, um, the Reinvest Your Page program. That was something that had come up as an idea very early after we got federal dollars and Choose DuPage was able to take it from an idea to a program we could actually vote on as a board to getting money out to businesses in such a short amount of time. Um, and it not only allowed us to get a running start to help businesses, it allowed us to be a model of good governance in the region as we saw Collar counties calling us, calling Choose DuPage, trying to figure out how do we mimic that thing that you guys are doing. Um, so it's just really a source of pride. I know all of us feel like we wish we could be doing more and giving more dollars and more help. Um, but I think this is just such a good example of when we've done things really well. So I just wanted to thank Choose DuPage for 
the work you've done in the last year. And I'm sure as we get more federal funding that'll allow us to invest in our businesses, I'm sure we'll be coming back with for more help. So thank you. Thank you. And we stand ready. I didn't want to mention that, but if there is another stimulus plan, because we never know, but if there is another stimulus plan, uh, we have our interns on standby and our team here is ready to help DuPage County however we can to continue our efforts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Bedelov, and thank you for being willing to just jump in because I think that that's going to really be the key in this next year is that we're all just at the ready. So thank you so, so much. And now we'll move on to Beth Marchetti. I think, Marchetti. Chavez, I think or, Member Rutledge has her hand raised. Oh, I apologize. I didn't see. Thank you. That's Go okay. ahead, Member Rutledge. All the blood is drained from my hand here. But um, uh, Greg, I just wanted to take a minute to thank you uh, for your your quick end of the year trying to meet a deadline efforts uh, with my diaper drive. You, your staff and your interns produced a bunch of valuable information for me, um, kind of get got thrown to the townships, but I did want to thank you and acknowledge your help uh, at the end of the year. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. And now we will move on to Beth Marchetti. Um, as we all know, this hospitality industry has been struggling. So we're looking forward to your update to find out how we can help. So Beth, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Beth Marchetti, Executive Director of the DuPage Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm proud to represent the communities, the hospitality industry, uh, 23,000 strong pre-COVID. So we're going to start the presentation here as soon as my, you all can see this. There we go. I'm going to start with a video. So enjoy. So I'd like to mention that that video was shot before COVID, but as you can see, much of the things that we offer that makes DuPage unique is still relevant. Um, the outdoor spaces, Medina Country Club, all of that that we touched upon right there. So how we were started and why we are still important today. So in 1983, during the Build Illinois Act, hotels agreed to levy a tax upon themselves as long as it was to help generate additional overnight stays, a uh, self-funding revenue stream. So um, the local tourism and convention and bureau grant goes to 40 tourism bureaus across the state. Uh, we are the certified bureau representing DuPage County. One of the um, integral persons who helped start the bureau was Jack Kneffer, and I'm sure I'm not saying his last name right, who was the county board chairman at the time. 
Um, so we had a lot of civic organizations. So we've been around for over 35 years. Um, we receive about $1.5 million in tourism grants uh, per year. How we are funded is with those grants, um, but I, I have to mention they have to be matched. It's a state uh, grant that has to be matched with local municipal hotel taxes, our partners, and then we get a contribution from the county as well. As both Lisa and Greg mentioned, um, we were not eligible for the PPP loan because of our 501c6 status. Um, fortunately, with this last round, we are eligible, so um, that's great news for many of us. So DuPage is a big player. Um, Pre-COVID, we generated almost $2.9 billion, that's billion with a B, for DuPage County. Uh, we are one of the largest suburban metropolitan areas of hotel inventory in the country. So 110 hotels, 16,000 hotel rooms. And when we bring visitors in, which we call good money, those are people that come in, spend money, and then leave, it results in a healthy economy. So there's just a few of the stats that we have. Uh, 24,000 jobs, um, 51 million in local tax receipts, and 191 million for the state. So although we talk a lot about hotels, it is about other items of revenue streams. So of the $2.9 billion, you can see the majority of that money was spent on food and beverage. Next comes transportation, then retail, rooms, and I can't see because of my, hold on, entertainment. So we have had conversations throughout the years of what is the return on investment uh, that the county receives? So in working with, and I think Jeff is on the Zoom call today, we worked with him on the Illinois Revenue site and the stats that we have. So of the 4 million hotel rooms where people were staying in our hotels last year, um, with the county hotel tax, I'm sorry, with the county sales tax, just in two categories, you can see that first column here, right here, we generated almost $10 million in sales tax for the county. So $50,000 contribution generated at minimum $10 million in the county uh, sales tax. More importantly, if you look at this eating and drinking places, while 65% of the business does come from more local uh, with the, the restaurants, 35% is spent by those 4 million guests that were staying in the hotels. So if you take away that 35% right away, and as uh, Member Eckhoff mentioned, um, I thought tier two, uh, I had it in front of me, does not allow any indoor dining yet. Is that right, Greg? Beth, it's, it's, I'm getting clarification right now, but I believe it's for, meeting, it's for meetings and other small gatherings at 25% as opposed to strict indoor dining. So it, it, uh, it is very- Kind of a matter of semantics. Yep. So again, 35% and then 26% of guests, visitors to our hotels are spending that in uh, for merchandise and retail. They don't sit in the room and shop on Amazon. They really do get out like a local, as you saw in the video. So again, we're number two and we like to keep it that way. We are second only to Chicago. Um, next is Lake County, but we're still double in terms of revenues. So COVID-19, I don't want to really <laughs> spend a lot of time on, but it leveled the playing field. And um, so we're all starting from scratch in terms of coming up with a recovery plan. We are the experts in tourism. Uh, we work with research-based facts. So Although people think tourism is uh, fluffy and we pass out visitor's guides, all the decisions that we make are based in research. Um, I'm happy to also announce that the Senate created um, their committees yesterday and Chicago Senator Saren Feigenholz will be serving on the tourism and hospitality committee. So uh, it's great to see that the General Assembly um, thinks that tourism and hospitality is one of those areas that will lead the charge in recovery as well. So we're boots on the ground. And why I'm mentioning this, our hotels have sales folks. 
Uh, one of the larger hotels uh, usually had 11 salespeople on staff. So what the Bureau does, similar to what Greg mentioned, is we're not advertising in our backyard. The hotel salespeople want to do that themselves. What they want us to do is go further out, Michigan, Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, and find those small meetings, find those family reunions, all the other things that we can bring to our hotels to help augment what they're already doing. So filling those 16,000 hotel rooms requires a significant toolkit, uh, incentives, our sales effort, marketing efforts, just to name a few. So there's hard work ahead, but there's good news. So again, our research shows these are some of the things that we're going to be focusing on in the next year. So incentive programs for hotels, venues, and restaurants. Um, I think banquet facilities have somehow just kind of uh, really been struggling. So that'll be a focus for us. Um, sports tourism and the DuPage Sports Commission. Uh, we will really have to be nimble and pivot and go after that leisure market. Um, and then also weddings that have had to either rebook or have smaller ceremonies are ready when it's safe to do so to celebrate and get together with their families. And then also greater um, countywide promotion. So um, Frida Kahlo, we talked a little bit about last year when I did a presentation with Diana Martinez from the MAC. Uh, I wrote a letter recently to help support the arts. And we are doing, um, we are really promoting road trips that we can uh, help focus on in this uh, drive market that includes Frida and then Human Nature, which is going to be a new exhibit at the Morton Arboretum, similar to the trolls that you saw. So what, what people need from convention bureaus, uh, here's a, a quick chart. They're looking for outdoor recreational activities, obviously because of COVID, but also restaurant, dining, hotels. People are still staying in hotels. Um, Karen Ayala from the health department was talking to us about over the holidays, it's still safer for families to put their loved ones in hotel rooms rather than being on top of each other and, and um, you know, sharing family and households. And then obviously COVID information. So for residents, which believe it or not, again, because our grant requires that we talk to people outside of 50 mile radius, we are the number one source for events and things that are happening in the DuPage area. So you can see 51.8% of our residents are looking for things to do while social distancing. 49% activities, news and update, and then obviously restaurants. So you can see that from Destinations Analytics. So really, our role is an economic driver and a job creator. Um, the sales pipeline, just as Chicago's McCormick Place is booking years out, so does the DuPage Convention and Visitors Bureau. So many of our contracts are for 2022 and beyond, which obviously we'll, we will be continuing to pay attention to mitigations and never bring a group here that isn't allowable. But we have to start somewhere. We have to really um, recover. So what's at, what's at stake? Um, obviously, we talked about weddings and family reunions. We get brides all the time. Is it safe? Will it be safe in September? Will it be safe in November? And I wish I had a crystal ball. Um, but we will continue to work on booking those for our hotels and our banquet facilities. Um, we are happy to announce that we have a hybrid um, platform where we can have meetings virtually, similar to a trade show. Uh, where you'll check in, you'll hear keynote speakers, and then break out into those rooms and setting appointment times with people that you want to meet with. So um, we have a bridal showcase coming up in March, uh, right after Valentine's Day, when hopefully all those brides got uh, and grooms got engaged. So, But what we already have on the books is international soccer in partnership with Naperville and Aurora, USA Weightlifting, Cyclocross, which will be at Cantini, um, that was rescheduled from December 2020 to December 2021. Fraser Cup, USBC, Intelligentsia, American Legion Baseball. And um, I, I know you heard that in 2026, the President's Cup will be coming to Medina. So why that's important, and I know Greg has um, talked about this, where you know we want to make it easy for uh, permits and people to get in and out quickly and easily and schedule their business. Why the Bureau is important in this area is Chicago and the Woodfield Convention Bureau will heavily be selling and trying to get that business to come on to the Cook County side of the uh, dividing line. So we want to make sure as much of that economic 
uh, driver and money is left in DuPage County. So uh, we did a really great job of communicating the CARES money from the county and in partnership with the county health department and Choose DuPage. I just want to give two little, uh, two big uh, success stories. Um, the $15,000 meeting program, again, this is for future meetings. We were able to generate 1,000 room nights, 168,000 in hotel revenue. Um, so for $15,000 for our hotels to reach that 168 and strictly hotel revenue is really important to them right now. Again, this is future business. This will, th these won't happen or they will be rescheduled till it is safe to do so because of the mitigation. Um, a $25,000 Expedia buy, and you've all heard of Expedia. It's the, it's the number one uh, hotel booking site. We were able to track 8,370 room nights from a $25,000 investment. And again, 717,000 in gross hotel revenue. So these are tr accurate numbers. These are the power of what we're able to provide for our hotel partners, which they really need the support right now. So what we are asking for is uh, in March, we will come to you with a resolution request where we are able to apply for our state grant, continued investment, with tourism, and if there are future um, stimulus packages, um, we would be interested in talking how we can help support our hotel programs. Um, uh, I also uh, wanted to add that bullet point when Sarah Feigenholz and her committee, I'm assuming they'll be members of the committee that, that hail from DuPage County, that we, we follow any legislation and we help support in partnership with the Collar Counties in Chicago, uh, a recovery effort. I would argue that in today's globalized network world, every community must compete with every other community for their share of visibility, yeah, their share of attention, their share of respect. And you couldn't hear that? Member no, Rutledge? Not really, no. Okay. Basically, uh, that was Jack Johnson, formerly from Choose Chicago. He is now with Destinations International, and I'm wrapping up anyway. So he's basically saying that everyone is competing. So I guess what I'm leaving with you today is if we're not ready to go with a recovery plan, others will. There um, are obviously areas in Illinois that continue to do well and are at uh, higher occupancy than DuPage County in Chicago, but we have we are primed with a great opportunity in the suburban market to get some of that business because of civil unrest, because of hotels closing in, in Chicago, there's opportunity for growth. And I know Greg and I will be working, and Lisa, I just emailed you about doing a presentation with our hotels. So the three partners on this committee are your partners in economic driving, economic development where we're driving business and hotel uh, revenue and sales tax for the county. So thank you for the time today. Thanks, Beth. Thank you so much, Ms. Marchetti. And thank you to everyone today. I know we've kind of got to move along because um, uh, of timing. So if anyone has questions, I would just ask that you email any of our three presenters today to move it along. Um, but thank you so, so much. Um, so moving on, um, do we have any old business? Is that a hand? Is raising their hand. Uh, Member oh, Yes. Hi there. Um, thank you. Great meet. Great first meeting, and nice to see everybody. Um, I just wanted to um, kind of put in a plug for last year. We did a nice kickoff under um, stewardship of Member Elliot on diversity and um, MBE program, and taking a look at what we do in the county here. And I'd like to revisit that and continue that conversation on this committee. I know Greg Bedlov is a great um, partner in that, and he has you know great. Great knowledge to share what he's done at the Tollway uh, Committee or Tollway Authority, I should say. And we'd just like to, you know, like I said, put in a plug for continuing that conversation. It is an economic driver. Thank you, Thank you so much, Member um, Renahan. And I just wanted to say that Greg and I spoke briefly about that when um, when I was kind of onboarding to this committee, and it's definitely on my radar to keep that front and center. So why don't we even just make that an action item for our next meeting so that we can get the wheels turning on that? Because I think that's a fantastic idea. So thank you. All right, any other old business? Oh, Member Rutledge, I think I see you there. 
Thank you, Chairwoman. I'm, uh, it might be new business, actually, but but again, under Tim Elliott, we started to talk about affordable housing as a economic dr driver, and I'd like for that to continue as well. I love it. That sounds wonderful. Let's put those on for our agenda for the next meeting, and uh, like I said, we'll get those wheels turning because I think those are both fantastic ideas, so let's do it. And I think they'll be great drivers, drivers too in this post-COVID economy to make sure that we keep that front and center. So anything we can do to get this economy moving. So thank you both. All right, any new business? Okay, seeing none, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Hello. Second, Second Rutledge. All right, do we need to do a roll call on adjournment? Yes. Okay, let's call the roll. Okay, Chavez? Aye. Selman? Aye. Renahan? Aye. Eka? Adiciani? Aye. Rutledge? Aye. All right, thank you everyone for hanging in. Um, stay safe out there and we'll see you at the next meeting. Don't forget to take advantage of all those action items that everyone gave us today. So thank you so much. Thank you, have a great day. Thank you, Chair Chavez, well done.